Hey guys, Christo Garcia, my swing evolution. Before we get into it, I wanna say a special thanks to my main man, Dr. Michael Bianco. I got this really awesome Ben Hogan picture back here that I'm gonna be hanging in my office. And uh, he wrote me this really interesting letter about how Mr. Hogan, well, basically they had to save his life by by tying off the biggest vein in his body and then he could hardly walk and, you know, but he continued to move on and be an outstanding player and probably played even better after the accident. As crazy as that is, but I've got a special, special treat for you today. My main man, Reed Howard and I are gonna be doing a breakdown on Ben Hogan's golf swing and we're gonna compare it to Gary Player. Mr. Player, has nine majors just like Mr. Hogan. And Mr. Player also has nine majors on the Champions Tour. He completed the Grand Slam twice as a PGA player and as a member of the Champions Tour. Well, believe it or not, I just got back from Philadelphia where I was meeting with Mr. Player and we filmed the new episode of Mr. Hogan. So I'm gonna be continuing Mr. Hogan as a series of episodes like a TV show. So I'm gonna be doing all this stuff coming up. I've got so many things I'm excited about, but let's jump into this breakdown with my buddy Reed Howard, where we compare Ben Hogan to Gary Player, the Hawk versus the Black Knight. Now guys, if you like these videos, please click subscribe, hit a like, leave a comment. That stuff helps us out a lot. And if you wanna learn more about My Swing Evolution, you can go to myswingevolution.com where I've got my top five swing secrets video available for free. And I've got full length instructional videos that tell you how I rebuilt my swing. This is a fun thing. I love that we've always been talking about, about Hogan and, uh, and I just knew you were kind of talking about Gary Play. And this is kind of that secret that secret move that you know I care about so much, um, where you throw up that shaft plane, and then you see, God, he, he, you can definitely tell that this guy was trying, trying to be similar to Hogan. He has a similar build, but he's actually able to return it right down to that shaft plane. He's actually even a little- Looks like he's under. <laughs> I know, I know. Like Gary Player is probably like one of the, uh, Gary Player and, and Hogan. I've seen Hogan, there was this one time he was ripping at like three irons. I saw this one video and he was getting under like this as well. Um, so it's kind of an interesting thing. And then he's he's going through. But uh, but if you wouldn't mind, let me, let me move you around real quick. There we go. All right, so let me just do a little compare just so you can kind of see what this is like. Um, let's, where's my good down the line? Here's my good down the line of Hogan versus, I know that this is a three wood versus a, uh, I'm gonna actually just draw the shaft line right there because um, his his wood is back a little bit. It's just amazing how he's able to return. He, his hands get a little above, but that's simply because uh, he it's hitting off a tee. What do you think is the biggest difference, if you had to say, between Ben Hogan's swing and Gary Player's swing? Um. Kind of tough. I know the biggest things. the biggest difference I would say is Gary Player has more flexion in his spine at impact yeah. than Ben Hogan. Yeah, he definitely does. It's just to me it's amazing, and I know I've talked to you about a lot about this, but you got Gary Player who's won nine majors. How many people have won more than nine majors, right? You got Jack and Tiger, and that's it, right? Yeah, well you have uh thirteen um with um well, Bobby Jones had a oh, dozen. Oh, sorry. I, was, I wasn't going old enough. Yeah, I, I, sorry, I was thinking once the majors had become, um, once the majors had become all professional events. Uh, yeah, I'm no, thinking that, Varden, doesn't he have? Var, yeah, you might be right. Sorry, I guess I was, I was thinking. Um, no, but when you're talking about the modern era, or at least post-World War II, there's only Jack and Tiger. There's Jack and Tiger, and then these two are these two guys are the two guys that that were right behind them at nine, right? Yeah. And back then it was so hard to travel as much as Gary traveled. But it's just amazing to me that both of these guys, you can see his hands are right on that plane line. Gary Players is actually below. And then and then if you get like 
I don't know, let's see, let's find a, a standard guy. Not standard, because it's kind of rude to say that, but if you, let's see, where is, yeah, like a Zach Johnson, right? You go ahead and throw a shaft line up him. Because it, it, it looks normal when you put Hogan and you put, um, you put Hogan and you put, you know, Gary Player right next to each other, but it's not normal. Like, you know, uh, impacting on that plane line is not a normal thing that happens, you know, and you can kind of, I, I have, I have one of Henrik Stenson here too, and he, he, uh, he impacts above, you got Dustin Johnson. This is kind of, And so if, if anybody thinks that it's a normal trait to impact on that same line, they don't. And it's like, you know, DJ's probably not going to win nine majors. And, you know, both, both, Gary, Player and, uh, both Gary Player and Hogan did. And it was kind of incredible. Let me see. So what is your, what, what is your favorite question that you're going to ask him? Do you know yet? Man, I've got a list I've been drawing up, but I would say, um, what did you take from Ben Hogan? Yeah. Because, I mean, so much is similar. One thing that I notice when you, when you put these two side by side, do you realize that Hogan and Gary Player both were, had very long arms for their height? Did you ever know that? I, I heard that Hogan did. I didn't know that Gary Player did. Gary Player, he'll, I saw him at a clinic and he compared himself to a taller man and he's like, but notice this, I've got arms like a gorilla, just yeah. like Ben Hogan. Oh, <laughs> it's man. one of those kinds of things. So, um, so that might be, you know, part of the, you know, the uniqueness of, of their bodies. But the one thing that blows me away is, you know, now it's interesting because Harry Player's shoulders don't look as open, but his hips are wide open. But, but Ben Hogan was—he opened like like a gate, like a book. It was just yeah. perfect. And let's see. I, I think you know Hogan, especially old Hogan, maintains his. Uh, so if we kind of put thro throw a line on the hip joint up to the up to the ear, you know Hogan lowers like everyone, but he doesn't lower. You know, I, I like I kind of think I told you earlier. I feel like Hogan. You know, there's about an inch of lower, which if you you look at a lot of swings, especially in iron swings, there's not as much. But then you got Gary, who's going down probably almost five or six inches. Um, and I feel like Gary Player is like a combination between Ben Hogan and Lee Trevino, because Lee Trevino I, kind of has that pretty aggressive uh, drop in the head. Yeah, I don't know if anybody, like Trevino is the most I've seen, and Gary Player has to be number two. Yeah, I mean, he was healthy. And one more, I'll throw one more at you. Yeah. Tommy Gainey. Who? Tommy Gainey? Tommy Gainey. Do you know two. what I'm talking about? Two gloves? Yeah, but he, he, he enters above the line. Well, that may be the case, but I'm just talking about a, quite a dip. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, he has a big, big dip. But uh, Lee Trevino and Gary Player, I think one of the methods that they use to get down to this line is they're lowering so much and then they deal off that club and then they open up. Like you said, Hogan opens up a ton as well, but you can definitely see the amount of rotation right here um, that Gary Player is putting on the ball. Like his back pocket is looking like it's, uh, it's almost even with his his lead pocket is almost even with his trail pocket. You know, this, uh, this particular position, one of the things that uh, I was interested in last year with my yoga studies is I don't have very much lateral side bend. I don't have a lot of room oh, really? in my side bend. Whereas, you know, like, you know, some friends and, you know, my girlfriend, they, they can, practically go 90 degrees like Joaquin Neiman, you know? Yeah. So I think that that actually affects how much room the, the pelvis can, can pivot. Absolutely. There's, there's so many, because I tried for so long to try to get into an exact, into an exact position that Hogan, this is a, this is a younger, younger swing of Hogan, um, trying to get into the exact positions and I wasn't able to do it. And I don't know, if it's because I wasn't built the same way. So like I kind of found my own way of being able to return that shaft angle 
to the address position, but I don't know. You said that they have really long arms. My, I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, and my wingspan's about 5'11", so I, I have longer arms, but not crazy. You know, they, they, may have, they may have had very, very long arms. Um, but they had such a good move. One thing that's always interesting and that I found when I was kind of looking at these two swings, um, let me see if I can find a good front on of, uh, of Gary. So this one was a good one while he was actually playing in the US Open, I believe, um, and I think he wins. But even when he's going after it, they both come into that ball with quite, their lead knee is quite bent. So even though he's definitely rotating, that lead knee is staying very, very bent, and Hogan has a very similar, similar action. Yeah, I call it the cowboy. Yeah. Because um, it's in the process of straightening. They're getting into their vertical part of their swing, the vertical force. But it's because I believe they have such a strong lateral move that there's a lot of flex in that lead leg. And, and I believe, you know, Mr. You know, Norman just kept the flex, right? Yeah, he, he stayed flexed all the way through. But I do find it interesting because if you looked at a lot of more modern swings uh, where they don't enter, they, they, they can't return to the shaft plane, um, there's a lot more jump uh, on that lead knee, like a Justin Thomas or something like that. Yeah, where, definitely. You know, not only is that left knee fully snapped, the foot is literally coming off. Whereas look at these guys. These guys look like they could handle 300 pound squats on those knees, like they're braced into that left knee. And uh, both of them are just one frame before impact. And then you can see Hogan starts to straighten it almost after impact, which is kind of interesting. Because I don't even think it's fully straight right there. I think it's I think it's straightening. And then Gary, look at, I mean, he's totally bent right here. He is not, yeah. and, then, and then he snaps, wait for it, right there. I mean, it happens quickly, and you'll notice that Lee Trevino as well, um, he gets left, and, and Lee's leg is actually even a little straighter at impact, yeah. which really pushes his left hip to the rear. Right, right. No, I mean, it, it, it's, it's kind of amazing, and, and you know, the, the bend into the snap. I mean, Lee Trevino's is another super cool swing that I basically... I mean, I've, ta I've talked to you about this quite a bit, but I just, like, I really believe that these guys are able to line up, and when they're setting up, their shaft is already on the plane where they're going to be hitting the ball. So the biggest difference between their address and their impact is simply rotation, and then their left arm is going to be slightly different. This is what we were talking about earlier. Hogan, like, if you take a Bryson DeChambeau, he almost has that shaft matched up with the left arm, and that's what I do, which is the way... Hogan's going to impact this, right? The, you know, it's going to be a straight, you know, everything's going to be accelerated. But he's, he is still on, I mean, it's old footage, but this is probably right. a pretty straight line, actually. So I guess the club is like somewhere around here right now. Um, but, uh, but the truth is, is he's coming in on the same plane line. So I think that they can get a better feel for what impact is going to be because they're they're staying on that same plane line. So at address and they're getting the feel of the shot, they're, they, they can literally feel what the plane line is going to be at impact. Then they go back and then they get you know straight back to that position. Whereas if you take a Dustin Johnson or you take a Zach Johnson or you take uh, Justin Thomas or any of those guys, the, the difference between impact is not just whether or not their arm straightens out. It's also you know on a completely different angle. So let me get a good front on. Oh yeah, here it is. So I, I have one other better, but I, I like how clear this footage is. And it's so cool to see that knee bend and then snap right after. And then Hogan has a similar move. You can tell that, that Gary was interested in being similar to Hogan's action. Did you happen to see that walkthrough drill video that I just shot? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I didn't throw it up here because I didn't know if you were going to do a video about it. But that was super cool. Well, the, the only point that I would make is when I look at Gary Player's lower body action, yeah. man, he is really moving those legs. Yes. And, and, you know, when I had the chance to talk to Jack Nicholas, he said, well, today they take the legs out of the swing a lot. Do I like it? No. And, you know, Gary Player's legs, he's dancing all over the place, you know. He really hit the ball with his legs. And that's what I tell a lot of 
a lot of my students that are yeah. just kind of locked in. And I'm like, you gotta learn to hit the ball with your legs. Oh you know? yeah, I mean, and I'm surprised, Jack. I mean, I guess if you compare anybody, any modern golfer to Gary Player, no one uses their legs like Gary Player uses their legs. I mean, Hogan used his legs a lot, but we're just looking at this. And in fact, let's see the follow through. You can just see he's just like. <laughs> yeah, you know, that one of the things I love about Gary Players is, you know, he wasn't always in perfect balance at the end of a swing like Hogan. No. But yeah. he was he was going after it. He was as aggressive a golfer as you've ever seen. And, oh, you know, being a smaller guy like Hogan and like, you know, we are, honestly, yeah. you know, I, I like the go get him attitude. I watched the uh, 78 Masters the other day. Oh, yeah. And, and he shot 30 on the back nine to come back and steal it from Tom Watson. And it was he was really, really going for it, you know, hit both both par fives and two and uh, just played spectacularly well. And it's kind of yeah, and it kind of just shows if you have good positions, you can go after the ball and have a lot of control. I know Hogan and his older, like, you know, even this, I've seen Hogan really go after it when he was younger. And that, you know, and even look at how long that club is. You know, that, that club is well past, is well past impact. So it's, these guys certainly were not swinging light at the ball. They were attacking the ball about as aggressively as they can get. But this they were able to this particular swing of Hogan, I think, is one of the most easy driver swings I've ever looked at. This one, like, yeah, yeah. it just looks like he's he's trying to hit it like 240 or something. He's yeah. so casual because because he used to tell uh, Chris Cheddar, you know, he used to say quit lollygagging because he he felt that you needed to be firm with the the strike. You can't. You know, of course you can take some off of it, but I mean, Gary Player just, he just really went for it. I mean, look at that. That one, that one he's really snapping. There's, yeah, no, they definitely were attacking the ball and it was pretty, it's pretty impressive. I just think, you know, just for the amount of control that they both had, I mean, Gary Player literally looked like he was going, like he, he literally did that kick drill. Like his, his lower body was moving so hard that he would just walk through it and uh, yet he could still shoot 30 on the back. He could control the ball so well. And I believe that's because his positions were so good. It didn't matter how hard he swung. It's hard to describe the sound when Mr. Hogan hit a shot. He had this, this tenacity about him. It's really the stuff legends are made of. He was like Michelangelo and Da Vinci. You know, he was an artist with a, with a golf club. This is Ben Hogan's locker right here, number 50. He caddied for my dad. That was the beginning of their relationship. Suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character. He knew what was going to happen, and there wasn't isn't anything he could do about it. Why he actually decided at that point in time to share what he told me, I, I have no idea. What I think he did was he applied physics better than everybody else. Ben Hogan never watched Jack Nicklaus practice, but Jack Nicklaus watched Ben Hogan practice. People say Hogan won't ever talk to you. Well, Hogan talked to me a lot. <laughs>